then let's start today's topic. Um, maybe some words about my person. I'm Matthias Denecke, uh, the education manager at Tradimo, and I'm also responsible for the 100K real money trading account. Um, yeah, and today's topic is seven rules of successful trading. And as you already can see here on the left hand side, I don't have a lot of charts today because this is more a mindset, more a webinar about rules and principles. But I think, in my opinion, it is very important to, to know about, about these rules and principles in general. Okay, let's start. So on today's agenda, I have seven basic rules for you and then additionally seven principles. But let's start with the seven basic rules. We have seven rules. The first one is specialize in a specific market. The second one is get ready or be prepared for your trades. The third one is keep track, be informed, and overview about all the markets. And then the fourth point is trade only one market and keep no more than two trades simultaneously. The fifth point is stick to your strategy rules. And, and this is the most important in my opinion. The sixth is pay attention for a good money management. So be more conservative. Conservative is much better than too risky because then of course you risk your money and you need the money to make some trades. And the seventh aspect here is the market is always right. There is no question about it. The market is always right. And now, of course, I will say some words about all these specific seven basic rules. And you can ask me at any time any questions. And after each slide of the PowerPoint presentation here, I will check the chat box. OK, what does it mean to be specialized or specialization? Uh, with this, I mean focus on just one market, for example, currencies or maybe you are interested in stocks or commodities. So keep the focus on this particular market. Don't trade stocks and currencies or stocks and commodities at the same time, because each market has it, its own characteristics. And it is much, much better to focus on just one market at the beginning. Of course, later on, if you are more advanced and experienced, then you can be more focused on several markets, let's say stocks and commodities and maybe bonds, for example, and options. Yeah, that depends on you and your skill level. But at the beginning, the clear recommendation is just focus on one market, currencies, for example, or stocks. Um, and it is also mean that specialization that you will be able to, to focus on that, then you can, you can understand the market more intensively and you will find leaks and good spots. Um, you improve your trading in this specific market and all this helps you a lot to become a successful trader. And of course, not every market is suitable for everyone. For example, some markets in the commodity um, markets, futures markets, um, maybe have some specific opening hours. And if you are a working people, then you don't have the time to trade, let's say, a sugar in the morning hours, because then you have to work and then you cannot trade this specific uh, market. Yeah, this is just an example. Uh, another one could be trading news in the futures markets with bonds. Then, of course, you need to have the time at these uh, special events and if you don't have the time then you cannot trade it and this is also mean that you need to specialize on the market that is suitable for you and of course specialization also means that um, you have to focus on a specific time frame so if you are full-time employee then you cannot trade day trading and make trades on a minute chart because you have to work during the day and you can only trade in the evening sessions. And for this reason, you can maybe only trade bigger time frames on an hourly chart, daily chart, maybe even a weekly chart. And this is a kind of 
requirement that you cannot trade all the time frames. And of course, try to use only one concrete strategy at the beginning. Yeah? Don't be distracted by a lot of strategies are available out there. Pick one and this is your strategy. And if you want to have another one, then your focus is not clear enough. And this is the reason why I recommend focus on just one concrete strategy at the beginning. Then we come to the second point of the basic rules, the preparation. So what is mean by preparation is that you need to have, uh, you, you need to know that a market, for example, a stock market has a specific event at the moment. So for example, for the currency market, they are especially uh, the usual, the uh, uh, ECB, for example, European Central Bank or the Fed, the Federal Reserve in the US, um, they have regular events and you have to pay attention to these events because these events have a deep impact maybe for your positions. And you need to know when these regular sessions, of course, you can only know the regular sessions and not the, the irregular uh, sessions. You need to know when these sessions and events are um, and consider whether these events affect your positions and, of course, the time frame. Okay, then let's switch to the chat box. Maybe you already have some questions. Um, hola, all good. Okay, so I don't see any questions, but maybe you have some right now. Then start typing and I will observe you, but it doesn't look like. Okay, then I can continue with my slides here. So, yeah, the third basic rule is it is good to have an overview. And with an overview, I mean keep track of markets that affect your trades. If you trade commodities like grains, wheat, oats, and so on, soybean, soybean oil, soybean meal, um, all these kinds of grains, for example, then you need to pay attention to the weather. Uh, if you a stock trader and a lot of your positions are in the financial um, sector, especially in the insurance sector, then you have to pay attention to natural catastrophes or disasters because these events have a huge impact on your trading positions. Or maybe you are trading bonds and interest rate or maybe some of the most important indices on the world. Then you, of course, need to pay attention to political situations. Um, and if you are a stock trader, and you have some specific uh, positions in the market, then you have to pay attention to the earnings season. So in the US, you have quarterly figures. And if you trade, for example, let's say Chevron, it's an oil company, then you need to pay attention to all similar companies, for example, ExxonMobil. Um, even your position don't have a specific event on a in a specific period of time, then of course, you also need to know when similar companies have regular events because the events, uh, the companies are so similar to your company that the move is in most cases the same. For example, if ExxonMobil goes through the roof, yeah, goes up a lot, then in, uh, I would say 99% then Chevron is doing the same. So there's a very, very high correlation. And if you have a very high correlation, then of course you need to observe all the similar markets as well. And the fourth point is the focus. And it's pretty close to the correlation I already mentioned. So the focus should be on just one market, for example, currencies or stocks or commodities yeah and if you have this focus then it is good yeah this is the first point i would say uh, but the second point is that you should not trade 
more than two positions simultaneously. Because at the beginning, and this is addressed to beginners, and at the beginning, you can lose your focus very easily. And for this reason, I recommend you to trade maximum of two positions simultaneously. So if you have, let's say, a nice spot in Euro dollar, and you see another nice spot in British pound US dollar, then maybe you can trade it because these are only two positions, but you need to watch out for correlation. And the correlation is very high between Euro dollar and Great Britain pound dollar. And this is then, of course, not a good idea to trade two positions with a very, very high correlation between them, between each other. And then, of course, you should avoid to trade these two positions, or you only take the half of the position size. Then the risk is already the same. OK, any questions so far? Let me check the chat box once more. No questions so far. OK, then I will continue. But you can hear me. Um, or is there any problem or any issue with the sound? So please, OK, you can hear me, <laughs> I guess. So <laughs> the voice is clear. Thank you for your feedback. Um, then I can continue here with my last three basic rules for your successful trading. And this is, as I already mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, the most important rule in my eyes is to have clear strategy rules. Write your rule down, rules down for your entry and for your exit so that you don't have any room or space for interpretation. If you write down your rules in a straight and clear way and you give it to another guy and the guy can do with this rules exactly the same as, I, uh, as you would do, then it is perfect. So there should be no room for interpretation. So if you say, for example, if the price breaks through the moving average 50, and at the same time, the moving average is rising, then this is my entry. Yeah, of course, it's just a hypothetical example, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it needs to be very clear and then it's perfect, yeah? This is what I mean with strategy rules. And of course, the same is valid for your exit rules and maybe for your um, management rules. Sometimes you have to adjust your position, then it's a rule. Write it down, write it down clear, and then it is perfect. Okay, then um, we had this topic a lot in the past, so the money management and my tip to you or my recommendation to you is stay 100% in your money management. So don't be more risky at a funny day or maybe you, you have a happy day, everything is good, and you say, okay, today I want to risk much more because then I can earn more. No, don't do that because you risk more and this is always bad for your account. Yeah? Keep going with your money management and don't be vague or um, don't make crazy things with your money management, yeah? Okay, then the seventh and last point of the basic rules is the market is right. There is no questions about it and it is a very bad suggestion or idea to think maybe I wait a little bit longer than I become right or not. So. Stick to your rules, and if the market makes something different from what you have expected, then it's okay. Yeah, you can close the trade, and then that's it. It's not a big deal. Um, so don't uh, trade against the market, and don't try to have the longer breath to finally be right. Yeah, because the market always has the the longer breath. I would say. OK, then let me just check the chat box once more, because I don't want to miss a question from you. 
Okay, here's one. Um, if market is right, how we can stay 100% with money management? Um, if the market is right, let's say you are long in euro dollar and the market is moving down, then you have usually or you should have a stop loss. And the stop loss is triggered and then you are out of the position. Yeah, you are flat. You don't have any open position there. Um, yeah, and then the market can go down and can fall to zero, doesn't matter because you are not anymore um, commit, committed to the market, committed to your position because then you are out. Um, hopefully this answers your questions. Um, let me check another one. Will you recap the overall session? I missed out on the first five slides. Unfortunately not, but the good news for you is that this session here is recorded and is available, I would say, tomorrow, latest on Thursday. And of course, we send out newsletter with a link to the right uh, video. And you can check all the recent and all the webinars from the past for free webinars. I'm only talking about free webinars because we have some paid webinars for our premium members as well. Um, you can check all the free webinars on Tradermo uh, on YouTube and then look for Tradermo and there you can find a lot of webinars we had in the past, just for your information. Okay, um, then I would say let's continue with the seven principles of trading to become a successful trader. Just one question here I can check right now. If I understand we should stick with our risk money management card, that's absolutely right. Yeah, this is what I meant. Sorry for confusing you, but this is 100% right. Okay, perfect. Okay, seven principles um, of trading. The first one is consequence and self-discipline. Second, self-criticism and personal responsibility. The third one is available time without distraction. Fourth, every trade counts for itself. And you can um, add here some um, attention marks behind because this is very, very important. And most of even advanced traders forget about this, um, but this is very, very important. The fifth point is false trades are closed immediately. I know a lot of you and a lot of other traders don't do that, but this needs to be done. And the sixth point is any intraday trade is closed at the evening because otherwise it's not longer an intraday trade because you then hold the position overnight. And the seventh point, seventh point is for third parties, I do not act. Yeah. Okay, let's dive a little bit deeper into these seven principles. What I mean with consequence and self-discipline is be consistent in implementing or adjusting your trading rules. Yeah, maybe some someday you have the idea, okay, today I make something different. If you do so, then you should write it down into new rules or replace the old rules with the new ones. Yeah, you cannot do something different just from the stomach. Yeah, just because you think, okay, my God, uh, my God said me, I do it different today because today is Wednesday and it is sunny outside. Uh, I think you know what I mean. Be consistent with your strategy, with your trading rules. And if you change something, then it should be written down in new rules as well. Yeah, stick to your money management is also part of consequence and self-discipline. Okay, then the second point, the second principle here is self-criticism and self-responsibility. And maybe you have already experienced such example. For example, you make a mistake in trading. And for example, you want to go long in uh, euro dollar and you misclick and you click on sell. You short euro dollar. And then maybe out of this mistake, 
this mistake leads to a winning trade and you make money with it. This is good. Maybe you think this is good, but it isn't good because this was a mistake. And it's much better and maybe hard to understand to make a cor correct trade without any mistake. And this trade leads to a losing trade. It's not the best thing to have, but of course, you made everything correct. And this is a good trade. Even the result is bad. Um, and of course, it is also very, very good. And I can recommend this search for bugs. Maybe this is not bugs um, for mistakes, problems and leaks and improve these leaks. For example, you can do this with backtesting or maybe you already have a trading journal where you write down all your single trades. So yesterday at 7 p.m. I went short in euro dollar. My entry was there. My position size was that and the result was X. Yeah? And then of course, if you have a lot of these trades, let's say 70 trades or 100 trades, then maybe you can see, okay, all huge trades, all huge winners. Um, I started after 4 p.m. And all losing trades I started, um, or all losing trades I made, I started before 1 p.m. Yeah, And then maybe you see a kind of pattern and then you can avoid the bad trades and be more focused on the good trades. So for this, it is very, very important to have a trading journal. And I prefer to do it with the own trading journal. I don't use any external software or use the trading journal from the broker. I write my own trading journal. And this is also a kind of homework or exercise. And I can, um, I, I can recommend this 100%. Okay, then I will check the chat box once more. Um, okay, there is no rec no comment. I can continue with the seven principles of become a successful trader. And this is available time is one important principle. Your available time often determines the market and the time frame. For example, if you are a full working employee then you have only time at the evening time. And this determines you in terms of trading only on the daily time frame or maybe the weekly time frame. Yeah, hopefully you understand what I mean. Um, working people cannot do day trading in other words. And traders with little money can rarely trade very high time frames. And what I mean by that is, for example, imagine or assume that you have only 400 bucks uh, and you want to trade um, stocks on a daily chart. And your stop loss is, let's say, $10 away from the entry. Then your $10 for just one share of the stock is $10 and you only have 400 bucks. $10 out of 400, you can calculate that very simple, is 2.5%. And if your money management say you can only risk 2% in a trade, then you cannot do the trade because the time frame in this case is too high. Or in other words, the stop loss is too far away to make this trade. Um, and if you trade only very tiny time frames, minute charts, hourly charts, then of course the stop loss becomes much closer to the entry level. And this opens you much more opportunities. Okay, then the thing um, I think I said this is the most important principle and not stick to your trading rules, but this is of was another very important one. Each trade counts individually um, because I have experienced in the past that a lot of beginners say something like, okay, now I have a winning strike, a winning strike or strike, 
winning season, a lucky period, however you want to call it. Um, and I made seven winning trades in a row. Wow. Okay. I cannot do anything wrong. Uh, my next trade, I will risk a lot, much more because I cannot lose. Uh, and then they increase the risk and then the catastrophe begin. Uh, so don't do this mistake to say, okay, the recent trades running good. So my next trade will be the same. So each trade counts individually, counts for itself. Yeah. If you make 10 trades in a row as a winning trade, then the probability of a successful 11th trade is 50-50. Yeah? There's no question about it. Every single trade has its own probability of success. Okay, then I will check the chat box once more. But I don't see anything, then I can continue. And yeah, these are the three last principles of becoming a successful trader. And this is maybe the most challenging principles in trading. I can tell you, um, close false trades immediately. Um, and this is especially very, very hard to do if a mistaken trade is running good. Yeah, for example, as I said, few minutes ago, you want to go long in euro dollar, but you misclicked and you sell euro dollar and you are short in euro dollar and the trade is running good. And then you should close the trade immediately. Even the trade is running good um, because it's a mistake and you cannot say, okay, I will do all my money in the future by doing accidents and misclicks and so on. You need to have trades that you can duplicate and a trade which is based on a mistake you cannot duplicate yeah this is the sense behind the close false trades immediately and of course this is also um, valid and maybe even more valid for trades that not running good for example you have made a mistake and the trade is running bad. And then the, the worst thing that can happen is that you say to yourself, okay, I hope, and remember, uh, uh, don't forget that hope is a beggar. Uh, and then you hope the trade is maybe returning to break even or is becoming a winning trade in the end. Don't hope. Close the trade. Yeah, this is a clear recommendation to you. Don't hope close the trade if you have made a mistake. Um, yeah, and errors can be, of course, you you misclick, you sell instead of buy, or you buy instead of sell. Uh, maybe you you um, pick the wrong ticker symbol, uh, and the underlying is the wrong one, or you made a mistake with the position size. Of course, if you make a position size mistake, then you can edit your position. Yeah, you can it make bigger or you can make it smaller. Then, of course, you don't have to close the position. You can adjust the position size, but it's also a kind of error or mistake. Okay, then the next one is close intraday trades in the evening. Otherwise, it's not an intraday trade, then you hold the position overnight, then it's not an intraday trade. Very clear, very simple. I think it's not necessary to explain it in more detail. And then the last one, maybe it's not the most important or a very important principle, but um, it's yeah, it's a kind of recommendation. So if you don't feel confident and you don't have a lot of, uh, you don't have a track record of five years of success, then don't trade other people's money or give any tips or suggestions to anything, to anybody else. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, it's, it's not a good thing. 
And I think this recommendation will help you a lot to being friend, friends with each other. Yeah? Um, in Germany, we, we have a, a phrase, this is called like, um, money stops friendships. Yeah, and maybe this is a good thing. I don't know if this is existing in the English one. And in general, I apologize for my bad English. I'm not a native speaker and I, I don't learn English in the school. So it's just learned by living. Okay, anything else? Any questions regarding this for basic rules or this uh, seven basic rules, of course, and seven principles? Do you have any questions regarding this? Don't be shy, guys. <laughs> and if you have any questions afterwards, or maybe you watch the YouTube video right now and you have some questions about the topic or about Trademo in, in general, then you can contact us under support at trademo.com at any time and we are happy to help you. Okay, I see some people are typing, so I'm curious about the questions. Are all your previous webinars to be found on website? Okay, let me show you. Um, I switch here to... Um, If you open YouTube, and I will link this in the chat box right now, and now here type in Trademo, then you can find a lot of webinars we had in the in the past. Yeah. So uh, here you can see trading strategies with support and resistance we had last week, trading with the beginner strategy part two and one, um, how to become rich with trading, how to pick stocks for investments, golden rules of money management, um, and so on. Yeah, Five best indicators, uh, four best reversal patterns, and so on. Yeah, You can see here a lot of um, webinars we had in the past, some a funny daily outlooks we had, uh, but for now we don't make this daily out use, um, outlooks anymore. But if you're interested in, just let us know under supportedtrademo.com and maybe we can reanimate them to, to make it real again. Yeah, but here you can see all the webinars and today's webinar, today's recording will be available, I guess, tomorrow, latest on Thursday. Okay, any further questions? No, worry. uh, no worries, your English is good. Just one question about money management. What do you recommend for an account of 1,000 euro? What is the suitable stop loss percentage? This is a good question and at the same time a bad question. Um, okay, so it is a good question because I can say to you that you should not risk more than 2% in each trade. Um, if you are more risky, uh, then of course you can risk 3%, but yeah, 2% is my recommendation. And uh, now the reason why I think it's a bad question, uh, because it is independent from the account balance. So of course, if you have a very tiny account of let's say, 200 bucks and then you can risk much more because you can earn this 200 bucks again in a very short period of time and this is the reason why you can take more risk and if you have a 1 million account balance then you should not risk 2% in each trade then you should lower your risk and let's say only risk 0.7% in each trade but in general um, it is to say that you should risk 2% per trade, or maybe if you're more conservative, then you can only risk 1 or 1.5% 1 per trade. 
um, it's independent from the account size or account balance. Okay, and maybe if you are um, yeah, interested in more about trading and maybe you want to have Signal community, for example, here, I can show you we have a uh, EN discussion channel where we discuss some cool trade ideas and some cool spots in stocks, commodities, and currencies. And then we have here our EN signal service uh, where we show all our real trades with, yeah, with our 100K real money account. So yesterday, for example, we opened three trades and you can see a screenshot out of the trading workstation we are working with. Um, yeah, so you can get all of this if you become a premium member and you can become a premium member under uh, this premium address. I can post this once more. And then of course I will answer your question here. Uh, do you have any recommendations on trading psychology books? Yes, I have. So, but now I have to remember the name. <laughs> it's Fun Tharp. Yeah, I don't know the, the the. I only remember the family name, so it's Fun Tharp. And if you're looking for books from him, then it's pretty cool. Trading in the zone, yeah, it's a kind of psychology book, but if you have, um, if you want to have more specific to trading, then I would recommend Fun Tharp. And then, of course, I can show you one more thing. If you go to, and I will give you this, of course, courses, you have a lot of free content about trading psychology, so you don't have to pay anything for content about trading psychology. So if you here click on the category and then select trading psychology, and if you don't want to pay anything, then of course you can go the slider to zero. And now you can see all the free content courses about trading psychology. So here we have two psychology patterns affecting which investing style. No, this is not a perfect one, but here, take control of your emotions. Um, and this is about trading psychology. Yeah, you can check this out. Um, let's have a look here. I was thinking that we have another one. Just a second. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we have a lot of instructors um, they're here. It's only one course. Okay, okay. I was thinking that here's also some other cool courses about trading strategy, uh, trading psychology. Jared Davis is always almost the same. And yeah, okay. Yeah, but we have three or four cool courses about trading strategy. Check out uh, learn at trademore.com slash courses. And there, of course, you can um, yeah, set the filters as you want. And then, of course, you find some other cool guys. So I can do this. So let me just give me one more try. Maybe the other ones were paid, not 100% sure. Trading psychology, price full, okay. Yeah, okay, here. Yeah. Now we have trading psychology, but it costs you $2.98 um, trading as a business. And yeah, some other courses about trading psychology. Okay, any further questions? doesn't look like, then I would say I stopped the recording and the recording of course is available um, as soon as possible for you. Yeah, thanks for your, um, thanks that you joining us or me 
um, yeah, and hopefully I will see you next week again. Bye, guys.